how this video is, um, I want to spread a power, not fear. Uh, so talk about a scary individual. For me, that was an understatement. I mean, I, I was like a walking time bomb, just easily set off by something as simple as someone jumping behind me uh, and yelling, boo. My, my favorite statement used to be, but I'm scared, but I'm scared. And I mean, everything from sleeping in the complete dark to watching television shows about criminals would, would make me become fearful. And I was, and I still have pieces, so it kind of is, um, it was, is absolutely ridiculous. And to some people, the things I used to fear may appear, may appear to be super silly or maybe even a joke, but living outside of the Lord leaves us vulnerable to the tricks of the enemy. And I was being tricked into believing I was or eventually would be a victim of every negative thing possible. Anything you could think of, I, I thought that I would be a victim of it. So I want to take a moment and think about how uh, you would define fear. And I mean, according to dictionary.com, the definition of fear is a distressing emotion aroused by impending danger, e evil, pain, etc. Whether the threat is real or imagined, the feeling or condition of being afraid. So I wanted to define fear to make sure we at least uh, have a general idea of what fear is. And focusing on the definition of fear is necessary because contrary to what I used to and many others believe, there uh, is an umbrella of things that are classified and induced by fear. So is it wrong to experience fear? Of course not. Jesus' disciples experience fear. The issue comes in when we allow fear to prosper. When we willfully allow ourselves to be afraid. As Christians, we are essentially saying, God, I know I'm afraid. And um, in essence, I'm throwing away my trust, hope, and faith in you. And I'm giving my authority to this fear. So when we remain remain fearful, we are throwing away the trust in God that shuts down the idea of fear. And we then give that fear the ability to prevail over the power of God. So when we remain fearful, we give up our hope of believing in scripture and its validity. When we remain fearful, we lose our faith to fear because we disregard the victory Christ gained on the cross. So I used to say, you know, no big deal. Everyone fears something at some point. But I had to let that philosophy go when I read Revelation chapter 21, verse 8, NIV. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, theirs will be in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. So after reading this verse, I began to view fear differently because I mean I was in awe to think that being fearful could be the reason why I spend eternity in hell I mean it makes sense though because while doing the father's business there is no place for fear if he sends if God sends us to a country that is in the midst of war and we are in bondage to fear then we can already conclude that we have lost the war again he won't throw you into the lion's den without an escape so that's not to say that escape will be what we imagine, because God doesn't care about the flesh. He cares about our soul. Mark chapter 4, verse, verses 38 to 41, NIV. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, came up, and waves broke over the boat, so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. 
Most importantly, what I extracted from this story in the Bible was that while Jesus slept, he had control over the situation. While he was asleep, and now we know that ne the sleep was necessary for Christ only because he was in the flesh. But we also know that he is now in the heavenly realms, and he does not sleep, nor does he slumber. Psalm chapter 121, verse 4. Why do we need to fear? What do we need to fear when we serve a God who has exercised authority even in his sleep? Thank God man isn't in charge because I know that for myself, I am as useful as a log while I sleep. So with this, knowing this, there is no reason to fear anyone or any situation because nothing or no one is too big or too scary to cause us to be fearful. We shouldn't fear people. God tells us to not fear one who can only kill the flesh but cannot kill the soul. And I mean that's a big one for me because when I would hear about crazy killing or kid or kidnapping, uh I became paranoid that I would be next. So it was bizarre, I know, but all thinking outside of Christ is foolish. So personally, some of my fear came from childhood experiences, but all although those experiences have crippled me with fear for several years. Lo and behold, Jesus came to make all things new. So those old experiences cannot keep me in bondage to fear any longer. Thank you, Jesus. Um, Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, NLT. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. I have many other verses uh, concerning prayer on the article online so as I have gotten older my fears became they became more uh realistic you know a, a little different than fearing the boogeyman but I certainly have had my share of worry and stress regarding the things we face in everyday experiences so I have a history of worrying about everything health grades my career goals my salvation everything you could possibly think of especially things that didn't affect me personally but pertain to family and close friends so trying to figure out uh what we worry about is pretty simple right i mean it, i mean you just kind of think about what you worry about what you're stressed out about and, and you know what you worry about so um you can change that um you know something we're uncertain about or something we feel a little shaky about causes us to worry no causes us to fear so worrying may come and appear to be just worrying is is but it's really only another word for fear but i didn't look at it that way until recently so why was i worrying because i wasn't having confidence in the lord to provide me with good grades a career and to protect my family and friends. I didn't have any control of those things. So like I mentioned before, experiencing fear is a human characteristic. We have that emotion for a reason. However, the only positive thing that comes from fear is when it's associated, associated with having fear and reverence for the Lord. It is respect, not tension or anxiety. So my struggle with eliminating all fear out of my life still remains a current struggle because I have been operating with the spirit of fear for so long that Christ um, has to help me identify what I am fearful of and how it affects me from day to day. And I mean operating in a very loose sense because I was operating in a very minimal sense because fear paralyzes. So I definitely wasn't operating in the way that God means for us to operate. I was merely operating enough to live a functional life, but I wasn't living as if Christ died to give me life more and abundantly. Many of the verses uh, shared in the article are personal and relevant to my personal battle with fear. I spent many days and nights reciting those verses as I had them written on post-it post-its and I had them placed above my bed in my dorm room uh, last semester, uh, actually two semesters ago now. So when I began to feel fearful, all I had to do was look up and recite the scripture. And that was the beginning of coming to know the Lord. And the enemy did everything in his power to manipulate uh, 
me into thinking that those verses were not alive and active. So my doubt and second guessing fed that manipulation. But I was determined to continue to, to read verses because I knew I had to start from somewhere. So I hoped that once the verses were received by my spirit, the Holy Spirit could begin to be a witness to the scriptures I was reading over and over and over again, just hoping to believe them more than I did the last time I read them. I, I, I would never want Christ to say to me, oh, you of little faith. That is one of the statements that just automatically encourages me to shake off any areas of my life that may be filled by anything that counteracts faith. If it's not from God, if it does not, if it's not supported by the word, it needs to go. So it is such a blessing to have grown from um, an extremely fearful person, the extremely fearful person I used to be. I'm still a work in progress. I'm definitely still a work in progress, but I don't find myself unable to sleep because um, of something that's just merely a mental game. I don't encourage anyone to play games with the devil. And I pray that I have the mind of Christ and that I continuously have my mind on good, positive things. So as I go day to day and explore and learn through things, I pray that stress and worry, which sometimes tries to come mass as something other than fear, that they're pushed out of my mind by thoughts of power, love, and a sound mind. I try to keep the forefront of my mind Keep it in the forefront of my mind that God is bigger than all of my fears. Any and everything that I could possibly worry or stress about, he has all in his hand. I want it out of my presence. I want fear out of my presence because I can't do anything with it. I mean, it, it's trash. So I give it all to God and I make it a daily obligation to not ask for it back. Sin is real and uh, the world uh, tries to make fear been like appear to be normal things like that but it's not not as a christian because god has already made promises to us to protect us to, to to heal us all those different things so we shouldn't be fearful um merely because as christians we're supposed to know and believe that god has all in his hand not that it'll be done the way that we want or expect but by his perfect divine will his plan his will will be done in our lives so the fear of any uncertainty in our lives, give it to God and, and let that fear go. And like I said, fear can try to come mass and something else, worry and stress. It's still fear. We worry because we fear something. We stress because we fear something. But it's still fear, and God has not given us that spirit of fear. So when you feel fear, cast it down. You don't want that to be the reason why you go to hell. I don't, I don't remember ever learning that fear um, is something that we can go to hell over uh, until I read that verse. But it makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense. How can you be a warrior of God and you're shaking in your boots? And that's not saying that, you, you know, a spirit of fear uh, may not, you may not uh, uh, at some point uh, feel like you're fearful. But when you allow it to grow and, and become big in your life to prosper, that's the issue. When you see it, recognize it, cast it down. Cast it down. And before you know it, You'll you you'll be so you'll you'll recognize it and you'll cast it down faster and faster and faster. But you want to be able to do the will of God. You want to be able to be a warrior of God to set the captives free. If the devil knows that there's a, there's a weak place in your life where you fear, he's gonna right, go right for that target. That will make you an ineffective Christian. Ask God to remove that spirit of fear from you. He can do it. He will do it. Like I said, I'm work in progress. Stress, worry, all those things. I have to give it to God. Trust God. So there's there's no place, time, space, or opportunity because I wanna I wanna win souls. I can't be afraid of demons. I can't be afraid of Satan. I have to trust God to take care of all those things. So don't fear and, and just trust in God and give the fear to God. Give your stress and your worry. Like I said, it's an emotion that even the disciples of Christ and they slept with Christ. They slept, you know what I mean, near him. They lived with him, and they had fear. So I mean, it's obviously something that's normal, that's natural, but um. You know, it's not supposed to prosper in our lives. So give your fear to God. Give it to him and ask him to take it from you. Um, and, and don't ask for it back. Give it to him and not look, not, don't look back to take it back from him.